I'm gonna cry. <laughs> no! I'm so sorry! It's okay. Hello everyone, my name is Juju. And I guess a bit of background about me. I super love Japanese cuisine and working with unique ingredients. One of my favorite Japanese meals of all time is onagi, but I've never learned how to cook or prepare it. But did you know that we have our very own type of eel here in the Philippines? And apparently there's like this really big market, big and expensive market here. So um, before anything, let's learn how it's got. Ako po si Olivia Nerio. Yung asawa ko kasi nagpursiger na mangunguha. Pero punti-unti lang. Sinimula yung pagkuha nung ano, nang hindi pa yung binibinta doon sa Manila. Dito pa lang, parang restaurant pa lang. Ay, simula kami ng ganyan, nakita ng ibang tao na ganyan yung pinanguha ng asawa ko. Sabi nila, mabubuhay ba kayo sa ganyan? Sa ganyan, panguha lang yan ng sili-sili. Nilagay niya sa basket, parang basket, tapos nilagay dito. Eh, ano ba niya, sa tinda-tinda lang, pampalit ng bigas, ulam. Pagdating niya, ayan, may, may pang bigas na, may ulam na. Pambili ng kape, isang stick ng kape, isang malaking baso. O, oh, para lang makaano ng mga anak ko. Natikman ng Chinese na masarap pala. Ano palang, restaurant palang noon. Tapos yung natikman na at saka na-order ng marami. At saka maramihan na, marami nang interesado. Una-una din kami sa, ano, sa business na to. Yun na, dami na nang contact sa amin na pinupuntahan yung bahay namin na saan ba daw yung bahay ni Abner. Kaya kahit na nga mayroong mga sasakyan, pupunta doon sa amin. Sabi na magingi kami ng ano. 100 kilos pang ship me namin. Yun na nagsimula na dumadami na yun. Tapos may mga tauhan na kami na binibigyan namin ng aparato na parang pang ano ba na ginagamit nila na pang panguha. Sa simula, pagtingin mo pa lang, parang nadidiri ka. Kasi parang natatakot ka. Kasi madulas siya eh. Mga wakawakan mo madulas. Pero hindi nila alam ng sekreto ng sili-sili na yung tulong sa tao. Na hindi lang isa or dalawa, halos lahat na dito sa negros. Kanya na yung ano, ng hanap buhay ng mga tao. Marami na silang nakatapos ng pag-aaral ng anak nila. Nakapundar na. Maraming nag-ano sa amin na magluluto sa ganyang ano may mayroong mga event event. Sabi ko okay lang kahit na libre, importante matikman nila kung ano kag uh, sarap yung ano yung sili-sili dito. Isa po yung pinakasikat na pagluto ng silisya yung ginataan na um, madami ng niyog na ilagay mo. Sakay sumasarap yung sabaw niya. Sarap talaga ano yan. Balik-balik ka. <laughs> yung lasa ng silisili para siyang isda. Kaso lang medyo malangsa siya. Pero yung may mga ingredients ka lang ilagay na matanggal yung mga lasa niya. Hugasan mo ng mabuti at saka ilagyan mo na ng kahit anong mapangtanggalan ng langsa niya. Masarap yung kainin at saka mataba. Sabi niya, ay, ayaw ko ng baboy, gusto ko ng sili-sili. Masarap kasi, hindi pa naka-high blood.
So ang gagawin nila, gumawa sila sa umaga, tapos pag ano, ibinta naman nila sa amin. Kaya nag-ano lang kami ng 10 peso every kilo, hanggang sa dumating na medyo madami-dami na, hanggang ngayon na medyo mayroong bulyong-bulyong na. Hindi na, hindi na dito. Lahat na ilo-ilo, mayroon na kami. Panlaon, Isabela, lahat na lugar nito, halos napuntahan na namin. Exploring the story behind Sili Sili with Olivia, the Eel Queen of Bago was eye-opening. From how the community discovered this delicacy to how it has been cultivated, since it made me want to understand its unique flavor and texture. With that in mind, our quest led us to a restaurant in Binondo, Manila that offers seasonal eel dishes in their menu. So to get a better understanding of how eel is prepared, we are here right now in Golden Fortune Restaurant and I'm super excited to try their different eel dishes. So over here, we serve those with a very beautiful eel and tausi dish. And over here, we have eel and clay pot rice. Try this out first. The eel is cut into kind of like medium chunks. They kind of left the bone in. <laughs> the eel itself is very, very delicate. I was expecting the eel to be quite rubbery. That's actually the complete opposite. The fish itself, it's super, super tender. The dish overall is very flavorful. I can taste a bit of oyster sauce in here. I can taste a bit of soy sauce. Onto the steamed eel with tausi. I can already tell just by looking at it, it's gonna be good. Mm. It's quite similar to bangus because of that. Fa it has that fatty element to it, but it's not as meaty as bangus, I would say. If you notice in Chinese cuisine, they have certain dishes but different variations of it. Eel is one of those ingredients that can be applied to so many things. I learned that they sell this eel for around 2.5 per kilo. Although it is a very steep price point, I think the flavor is well worth it. Um, it's also important to note that this eel is seasonal, so it's not always served here in this restaurant. One thing that I didn't expect to enjoy was the eel skin. It's a bit chewy, a bit rubbery, but it's so addicting for some reason. Okay, just to wrap it all up, these dishes were super good. I really enjoyed it. Before, honestly, I didn't have a clue on how to cook eel. Tasting these dishes have given me a bit more confidence. So wish me luck, guys, and see you in the studio where I will attempt to cook my very own eel dish. I'm gonna cook. I'll make the best dish out of you guys. I really have a soft spot for animals. So this is gonna be quite a tough job for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've, I've kind of actually named them, so <laughs> I memorized them because like this, see Elanor, so she's like the biggest one, and then we have Elon Musk, Kim Jong-il. <laughs> I've kind of grown attached a bit to these eels. Actually, all over the world, there's this huge disconnect between like the people who consume food and the produce itself. Like a lot of people are willing to eat whatever, but they're not willing to kill what they eat. So. I think this will be a very good, I guess, training for me to appreciate the food that I eat more. Because, I don't know, this is a very tough task to do. You know, when you think it's so easy at first, but when you're confronted with it, it's actually more difficult than you think. I've watched how they do it in Negros. So I think I can do it, but the problem is, can I do it? Like, really do it? <laughs> so we want to cut it, siguro a, a bit in between. Like, not too big, not too small. Just like chunks of eel. We're gonna find out if um, eel can be a good um, alternative to our pork whenever we cook Biko Express or even for the very, the most popular, I think the most popular dish here in the Philippines aside from adobo, which is sisig. To prep it for our cook, we are gonna be adding some hot water. So I'm just purely basing this off of yung, the way the locals prepare it. As you can see, um, medyo nag firm up ng konte yung skin ng eels. So after rinsing with really hot water, we're gonna rinse it again once with our just normal tap water. Just to get rid of all of the blood and slimy substances on top of the eel. For our first dish that we'll be making with the eel, I decided to go with uh, Bicol Express. I want to show that the eel is very versatile in terms of cooking. This can be easily applied to our everyday Filipino cooking. So 
Okay, without further ado, let's get started on our Beal Call Express. Our Beal Call Express. Ha. <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> okay. Although not a typical ingredient in Bicol Express, um, I decided to put a bit of lemongrass. This will help remove like the fishy scent of it. Okay, next we go in with some ginger. Give it a nice julian cut. So that's basically like matchsticks. Now we just want to roughly chop our onions. So we have bird's eye chili and the yung siling haba natin. Okay, now for the really spicy ones. Now we go in with the garlic. Okay, so mise en place done! And perfect. Um, let's give it a taste. <sighs> okay, chef. It's a hang, but it's good. A little liquid seasoning. Then, I feel like it's just a little bit of sugar. Pa. For seasoning, syempre, we need onions, garlic, calamansi. Squeeze out as much as you can. So typically, yung bell pepper ginagamit siya, diba, usually sa ano, yung mga sizzling tofu. Ganun. So I think this will add a nice bite and flavor to the seasoning, but you can totally opt this out. Okay, done. Flour goes into the bowl. Salt and pepper. Um, since yung eel is a bit soft, it's a bit very delicate yung texture niya. We want to recreate that crispiness and the way we're gonna do that is by dredging it first in flour and deep frying it. So hopefully it works out. So what we're trying to do is add a very light breading on top of the eel para medyo may kagat siya. Ayan, pwede na siya ilipat. All of our vegetables, straight in. Perfect. Diretso na tayo with our eels. So again, this is my own take of sisig. Not quote-unquote authentic by any means. Okay, now that it's smoking, sige. Turn off the heat first. Add your mayonnaise. And your calamansi juice. Cast iron pan. Painitin lang. Add a touch of butter, followed by your eel seasig. Oh, look at that sizzle, it looks so good. There you go, bon aperitif. <laughs> so, presenting our finished dishes. So we have our Bicol Express Eel. And then we also have our Eel Sisig. So let's give it a taste. It's got a nice hearty chunk of eel dito. Okay, okay. Masarap siya. I love Sisig so much, so I have high hopes for this. Right off the bat, I'm super happy with how each dish came out. Based on what we saw in Negros, the way they cooked the eel was in gata. So, sobrang bagay talaga. It cuts through. Because eel is quite gelatinous. And the spiciness and the creaminess of the gata really works well with the Bicol Express. And for me, this dish is a win. I really like this one. For the sisig naman, eel medyo ano siya. Medyo matinik siya. Talaga. I think hindi may iwasan yan. But if you're a person who really enjoys, you know, digging through your seafood type of thing, the eel itself is quite delicate. Halos wala siyang malansa na lasa. Eel has a really high potential to be used in so many applications in Filipino cuisine. It's a very versatile ingredient. Hindi siya malansa. Very delicate yung flesh niya. I would even go as far as to say, I think this would be really good with 
if you make it into kare-kare, paksiu, I hope I see more of this dish here in the Philippines because this is such a versatile ingredient that I think deserves more recognition. As a passionate cook who loves to explore distinct ingredients, I'm so grateful for the chance to understand Sili Sili and its origin in Bago, to witness its harvest and to experiment with it in the kitchen. This experience has made me appreciate the value of our heritage recipes more by making the most out of our produce and supporting the dedicated individuals behind these culinary treasures. Let's keep celebrating and preserving them to make sure they remain a part of our culinary legacy for future generations.